Hey, hey everyone, we're back at it once again. Back, it's our Tuesday video. We got another one for you with our series upon a series. We got so many series, I don't know what to do. Let's roll. We're back in the house at RPG Elite where we put the RP back into RPG. How do we do this? Well, we give you tips. We give you real talk about what's going on in the RPG culture because that's one thing we don't talk about a lot, but we do here. We also give you tutorials and tools, which is what we're gonna to do today with part two of our series of Dungeon Alchemist, the map maker on steroids. It's not the only map maker on steroids though, because we've got another one coming, as I've told you before, Kronos Builder, and we've got a whole slew of content. It's just hard to keep up here, it really is. Before we get into the video, I want to turn your attention over to the community tab. Got a new image over there. I told you I'd have a new one. Go over to the community tab. If you don't know how to get there, of course, links are in the description below. Click on it and see if you can guess. And also I got another poll over there as well. You can go and scroll down and you know, you can become a part of if you've never done anything over at the community tab, go ahead and just scroll down and be a part of the poll and the other stuff has already been done in terms of the images and the answers and everything. I'm gonna give you the answer to this week's image at the beginning of this week's classic tabletop RPG video, which comes out on Friday. So even if you just come in just to get the intro, just to find out what the answer is, go ahead and do that and take a shot at it. I'm gonna give you some love and some shout outs for those of you who get it right. Okay, well, we're gonna move right into part two of the Dungeon Alchemist basic overview. And we started that last month. And we're going to continue to do this more and more. And like I said, we have so much content. It's kind of silly because with Chronos Builder, the beta coming out really soon, you guys are gonna get a sneak peek at that as well. It's so much stuff that we have planned here. I'm really excited about this. And hey, if you're excited as well, and you like this stuff, then you should crush that like button. Saying it a little different now, you know, you gotta switch it up sometimes. And also, if all of this content is something that you would like to see more of, then go ahead, click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I come out on every Tuesday and Thursday with videos. Okay, let's get into part two of this overview video of Dungeon Alchemist, the map maker that's on steroids. And also just got a little ditty on the back end for you as well at the end. So if you want to, you can skip ahead. We got chapters. We always have chapters for our videos. So you can go ahead and skip ahead to any part of the video that you'd like to see. Let's get rolling. Now I'm gonna go back up here to format because this is important. Depending on what virtual tabletop you're using, if you there's a specific way to export these. So if I'm in Foundry, which I will probably be, then I am going to click on this virtual or this VTT import guidelines here. What it's going to do, it's going to pull up a web page. And I'm going to have to pull that over. So this is the web page that it pulls up. And then it just gives you specific instructions on how to export the map with whatever VTT that you're using. So that's kind of cool. So there you have all of your export options. Let's move on to the next one, which is the settings. Now the settings here are the settings that you work in. So if you want to work in a like a maybe a more medium quality or a low quality because you're going to be adding a whole lot of objects or your computer is kind of struggling or whatever, you can do that for your graphics quality. This setting does not affect the quality of the export. The export is where you're going to go for the quality for that. If you just are making your maps and this is the quality where you set on how you work with your maps, right? Have your screen resolution right here. You have a million of them to choose from. And mine is, you know, at the highest, which is nine, you know, 1920 by 1080, which is pretty much just about anybody's today. 
It's kind of like the standard now. You have your keyboard layout, and there are three of those. So QWERTY is for your North American, your English speaking countries, you know, USA and Canada and the UK. Azerty, and this is something I learned for this video. <laughs> Azerty is actually for Central Europe. So we're talking about France and Belgium and some parts of Russia. They use Azerty for their keyboard layout. And then you have QWERTS which sometimes they add a U at the end here. And that is for like Germany and Poland and Sweden, that kind of thing. So I'm going to keep it obviously on QWERTY. But for those of you who are in those countries, you have an option to change it. Now, when it comes to the scroll wheel configuration, you have two options. First one here is the rotate with scroll wheel when holding an object. And that is like if you click on the object, I'm not going to do it here right now because I'll do it when we actually go over placing objects. But when you click on it, you can rotate it simply by going up and down with your scroll wheel or your mouse wheel. However, if you want to do that differently, you can zoom with the shift plus your scroll wheel when holding the object. So if you click on it and then press shift and then use your scroll, scroll wheel then what will happen is that that's when it will rotate. I personally like to keep it on that because I like to use my basic scroll wheel for just zooming in and zooming out. That's what I like. So your UI scale is, you know, so you can see things. So if you see here, if you, you know, put that bad boy up, everything starts getting bigger. And you put it back down or you can make it smaller as well so you can get a little bit more real estate because this over here for some odd reason i just i th just think this is annoying that it's always out here and you don't have some kind of option that you can collapse this it just it's annoying but anyway i'm um, going back down here it's the same thing grid different colors transparency it's the same deal does the same deal it's just for you and how you want to work and then you just click save changes and this is pretty much how i like to do it so I'm just going to click that save changes because I did change the UI a little bit. OK, now we are at our redeem code. This one is really self-explanatory. Once you go ahead and buy it, you will go ahead and have your code. You can put it in here and you can activate it. Now, this is one thing that another thing that's annoying to me. That's just me. But you have to go and be on Steam in order to get Dungeon Alchemist. Why they did that just is, I just don't even understand. That is just, it's probably the most annoying thing about the program for me. That's the most annoying thing that I gotta hold, I gotta go, I gotta make a Steam account, I have to do, that's annoying. But that's what you gotta do if you want the program. So make sure that you have a Steam account and I'll go ahead and make a separate video on that so if you don't have a Steam account, then I can let you know, you know, how to get one and how to set it up and all the rest of that. Or you can just go online someplace now and just look up how you set up a Steam account. The next menu that we're going to be looking at here is the edit menu. And this is very simple. You have your undo and your redo. And the best thing to do there is get used to control Z and control Y, because those are the two keyboard shortcuts for redo and undo. So you have control Y for redo. You have undo control Z get used to that just in the keyboard you probably will never use this pull down menu for your view you have one thing you have your full screen and then you have your non full screen you, we are in full screen right now all you have to do is press alt enter and you can go out of full screen now for me that little extra real estate matters so I'm gonna go back into full screen and this is just how i like to work it's probably your best deal too just to get a little bit more uh, display real estate there the next one is your feedback and for one to report a bug and if you can see here this is one that i'm probably going to use because it just crashed just a second ago so i'm going to tell him the whole thing the summary of my problem what happened what i was doing what i expected to happen the whole nine and then you go ahead and you submit the report. 
They also tell you down here at the bottom to be very detailed about what you were doing. And so we're going to close that out. That's self-explanatory. And, and then you have the give feedback. And that is you have to go over to Discord. They have to join their Discord. Now, I am a part of their Discord, so I already I don't have to do that. But if you're not, then if you want to give some feedback, offer suggestions, things like that, they have separate channels in Discord for you to be able to do that. Next, we have the help. And these first four up here gives you the basics on how to do these things. So how to draw a room. It has a little pop up and it will tell you just three basic things. And it's simple. And I'm going to be using these as we go through each one of those. So you can see that in action but it's right there on the help menu and down here is your patch notes and it opens up you know what happened what we've been doing here with all of these different versions and all those little details and for those of you who are real interested in that this is where you can get it click continue and then come back out and then this one here obviously is going to pull up their website terms of use turns up pull up their terms of use what's the big deal on that let's do that let's pull up terms of use because you know this right here is what we really want to do right we really want to read all of that <laughs> because that for us is fun yeah right all right and then the credits which again we'll pull it up at the website and then you can go ahead and see all of the wonderful people who worked on the game and their names and the supporters and all the rest of that and that's it for a basic overview of Dungeon Alchemist. So you can go ahead and go over to Steam. <laughs> but anyway, you can go over, go over to Steam and get early access right now. Kind of follow along with all the tutorials and everything. And you'll be a boss. Trust me. By the time we get to the end of this, you'll be a boss. It's easy. Really easy. Dungeon Alchemist is... I've been really putting this through the test. I've been putting it through the ringer and I have a pros and cons video, probably the next video in this series. Still working on the website, folks. That is coming up, that'll be soon, but we're not gonna rush it. We're gonna make sure when we come out, we're gonna do it right. And also still working very hard on the behind the scenes logistics for our one shot. I will give you the details on that probably in the community tab. Be looking for that soon. That's it for me. I hope you have a wonderful week if you've got some games going on so you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say happy gaming and I will catch you on the flip side. God willing, the brothers got to go. See ya.